Hello, I'm Chris Goffey and welcome back to the amazing story of the Citroen company. The Traction Avant was launched in the mid-1930s and it caused a sensation in terms of the unique styling, the body construction and technological breakthroughs. The Traction Avant had been a hugely successful gamble. So well did it sell that within two years the Citroen company had paid off all its debts. It was to remain in production for 23 years, selling some 760,000 examples worldwide. Michelin had ironed out the bugs after only one year in production. That was proved by the inimitable Francois Lecotte, who drove one from Paris to Monte Carlo and back every day for a year, covering almost half a million kilometers. This was the first car having classical wings without sideboards. Never uh, people saw that before. So this was revolutionary about that car. It was a whole body. It was uh, new because of its monocoque chassis, which was not the first time uh, ever made, but one of the most popular cars who brought it into the public. I think you do find a lot of the Citroen owners, you know, once they've got a Citroen, that they will carry on. Um, there is something about them that attracts you. And um, I mean, people say to me, why, why, why Citroen? You can't really give an answer to it, it's just a case of, uh, you know, you started so you finish. And as far as I'm concerned, the Citroen Car Club has been my hobby anyway for nearly 40 years. So uh, I don't know what I'd do without it. So here we are in the museum's 1954 Traction 6. Starting up, slightly different from modern cars, switch on. Now you might think that's S for starter, but it's not. It's S for strangulator, which is choke. And D is for démarrage, which is... <laughs> Starter. Find the handbrake. The wonderful gear linkage, which um, came about when the automatic gearbox uh, didn't really work in the traction, they went back to a manual one. And away we go. Such a lovely car, this one, and in beautiful condition. The impact of the Traction on automotive design is so strong that this year the Design Museum in London put together an exhibition to celebrate the work of Bertoni. So from Paris to a sunlit embankment, Tower Bridge in the background and a wonderful array of Citroen cars because here at the Design Museum they put on an exhibition of cars that celebrate the work of the great Citroen designer Bertoni and some of the beautiful cars that he designed. The Design Museum celebrates all design, modern design, but we felt that vehicle design would be a particularly popular subject to look at. And we wanted to celebrate the work of Flaminio Bertoni because he was one of the preeminent car stylists of the 20th century. And his output, as I hope you can see behind me, was prolific. Bertoni was working for another coach builder. And, and that coach builder was a subcontractor of Citroën and staff of Citroën saw Bertoni at work. And they said, that guy is brilliant. And they recommended to André Citroën to hire Bertoni. And this is how Bertoni came to Citroën. It's a beautiful shape. If you look at a basic shape for 1934, it was a design, a real design icon. They, they actually the first car that was wind tunnel tested. My advice to anybody who wants to own an attraction is go buy one because once they've bought one, they will find that the pure aesthetics of it and the comfort of driving it, uh, the comradeship of the clubs, it really works out. The model is beautiful, isn't it? It's a model of a Citroen Traxion, and I like the model so much, I bought the car. <laughs> this is my very own Maurice, 1949, Belgian-built, would you believe, um, Traxion. Uh, the wide body, lots of room in the back, huge rear seat, cruises at 70 miles an hour, if you like, on the motorway, truly practical, a bit scruffy round the edges. I must get round to restoring it one day. Now, one of the most beautiful features of the Traxion are these beautiful sweeping wings. Now, I was in France a couple of years ago, and an old man came up to me with tears in his eyes and said that he was in the resistance during the war. And did I know why the wings were like this? And I said, no. He said, you lie on the wing and you push your rifle next to the headlamp and you can be driven up to an ambush, fire, and then be driven away, still lying on the wing. I thought, wow, I never thought of that. 
So we've walked a few hundred yards away from the Design Museum to look at a car that uh, a Traxion Owners Club member has parked on the street here. Peter, when did you get the Traxion bug? Well, when I was uh, a boy, I, I saw a fleet of these come past um, and I thought, that is the car for me. I want one of these. And how long did it take you to get one then? Oh, about another 15 years, I'd imagine. <laughs> Saving up your pennies. That's right, yes. So what is this car? Tell us about it. Uh, this is a 1949 uh, French Traction Avant and um, I've had it about 10 years. I'm, they're not so good in traffic, you've got no synchro on first, so I, I find that a bit hard going. Double right? de-clutch down uh, into first. Yes, yes, I yes, 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 yes. Oh, well, let's see how it goes. Thank you. And no synchro mesh on first? No synchro mesh on first, and I find doubly declutching is a lot easier said than done, <laughs> personally. And, um, and built-in air conditioning on the Traxion? Yes air conditioning and also a town and country hooter, I think we ought to say. This is for the town, for pedestrians. Oh, yeah. Wait till the taxi goes. Little quiet one and then for the uh, for the others. And how many cars have got that feature? How often do you open the windscreen? Oh, in the summer I leave it open. Yeah, it's lovely. It's just air, air flowing through. And uh, windscreen wipers, I always think, designed by M Mouse. <laughs> I'll demonstrate. There we go. <laughs> In 1938 came the six-cylinder version of the Traxion. In France it was known as the Cas, but in the UK at the Slough factory it was called the Big Six. It was built alongside this, the Light 15. Of course the British cars had leather trim, they had wooden dashboards and Lucas 12-volt electrics. Very superior. Like most classic cars, you need a really good owners club behind you if you're going to run one of these things. Now, Paul, you're the chairman of the Traxion Owners Club. How important is the club to people running the cars? The club's very important um, to all the members. There's, um, we have about 600 members worldwide. They constantly supply parts, uh, source parts from all over Europe for the members. New body panels are a problem. They will always be a problem. Um, Second-hand body panels are available. Uh, all the engineering parts can be reconditioned but certainly body panels and to have wings handmade is a real big problem but uh, we'll, we'll approach that if and when it happens but there's, e there's enough second-hand parts available at the moment that we can still repair and recondition. People, I mean I've servo brakes added on, uh, some people are putting the later engines from the DS's in the tractions and we're making them very very um, Fast, <laughs> fast, fast, and and making them much easier to use. But people do you, but you have to keep the originality. It's very important to to within reason keep the originality, so we don't change them that much. But uh, I was always told that if I bump started my traction, it would strip the crown wheel and pinion. Well, that's right. The, the gearbox is 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 the weak link on the traction. It was put together in just a few weeks, if you remember, in the 30s, and and you yeah, that's the one thing you mustn't do is to bump start the traction. After World War II, production of the Traction Avant in four and six cylinder guys continued, and a post war demand for cars in Europe saw production rates rise to levels not seen since the 1920s. At Slough, the majority of cars made were shipped to Commonwealth countries, where it proved exceptionally popular on rough roads in the Outback and the Veldt. But at the same time, Citroën was planning to launch its definitive people's car, the TPV. Tout petite voiture, soon to be known as the 2CV. The idea to make a simple peasant's car had started in 1935, and with Bertoni again instrumental in the design, prototypes were produced in 1939, and then hidden away during the war. In fact, it wasn't till the Paris Motor Show of 1948 that the factory went public with the 2CV, and the car was a sensation. It rapidly became a legend, the twin-cylinder air-cooled engine giving up to 60 miles to the gallon, the supple suspension famously capable of carrying a basket of eggs across a ploughed field with not one breaking, and a roof line that took the tallest driver and his hat. The 2CV was originally it always is to, to be known for the 39 saloon. When it came out for the 48 saloon, it was a second car. So it was really a, a, a car planned for the 30s, so it was revolutionary again. And it was planned for French people on the countryside and to work with. It was not a used car and a minimalized car as we think it today. It was really uh, needed, necessary to have a car for people who never had a car before. For a car that was meant to be a basic agricultural vehicle, it was used in more situations than this. In the promotional films, we see a wedding party enjoying a nice picnic. 
and the 2CV was also marketed as an affordable runaround for young lovers. In this film, a young couple have a delightful day out in their 2CV while still managing to write L'Amour Libre on the beach with their wheels. They would have only got one shot with the filming of this. They didn't have computer graphic enhancements in those days. Citroën haven't just been creative with their vehicles, their advertising has been rather different too. Take this curious sci-fi advert for the 2CV van. I'm not sure if this 60s advert were to be made today, it'd get passed both in terms of taste nor in the claims it makes. This pesky crow annoys the scientists so much that they take refuge in the back of the 2CV van. And when the blooming bird pecks the red button, the triggers a horrendous nuclear explosion. So is this the end of the ad, if not the world? Of course not. From underneath the rubble, the Megaton blast drives a fully functioning 2CV. The 2CV may have been tough, but indestructible? No. Later, the 2CV became synonymous with expeditions for young people around the world. And for the 2CV Cross, the racing events which even I took part in. Great fun. The last 2CV was produced at Citroën's Portugal factory in 1990, by which time over 5 million examples of all types had been built.